What if I told you you could record up to four hours on your EOS R5 without it overheating, and then you only needed 10 minutes of cool down time before you could go at it again? This would change everything, wouldn't it? Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Simon. Welcome to The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, click subscribe to get the latest notifications of my videos on tutorials, news, and rumors. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video can be found in the description down below with all, along with all the affiliate links. Now the big news today, and this is huge, this is huge news. Um, I'm tired of reporting on overheating and I didn't want to touch it again, but this is kind of the reverse of overheating. It's almost like a glacier has hit the R5. You can now record up to four hours on the R5 without it overheating in those overheating modes. Gerald Undone just put out a video where he found that you would get maybe 50% increased record time by using the Atmos Ninja R5. Not really a big deal. Doesn't really change the game all that much. Doesn't give you that much more extra functionality. If you've got the Ninja R5, great, put it on. It's going to increase your record times. If you don't, is it really worth spending $1,000 with the SSD to go ahead and get this unit? Well, the answer is yes, it is now. The channel No Life did a test. He pulled out the memory cards, and he also pulled out the battery, putting in a dummy battery, and he tried recording. I wanted to see what would happen. He got up to four hours before the camera shot off due to overheating. Now, he did turn off the heat management, so there is that, but he got four hours, and here's the other staggering piece of information. He wanted to see how long it would take before he could start shooting again. He said at several points in the video, it was between five and 10 minutes long. Okay, so you shoot for four hours. Aren't you gonna to wanna to take a bio break? Maybe get a cup of coffee, a cup of tea? I would. After 10 minutes, he was able to record again for up to four hours. I mean, to me, this is pretty much indefinite recording. Yes, I know he said four hours, but if you, all you need to do is take a 10 minute break, this is pretty much unlimited recording in 4K60, 4K HQ, this is, Staggering. This is huge news. And I invite you to go take a look at uh, No Life's channel. He's right around 900 subscribers, and there's no reason why this video shouldn't propel him well over 1,000 subscribers. So when you go there, post a comment, say The Ordinary Filmmaker sent you, um, and subscribe to his channel, like his video, because this is really big news. This is big enough that I'm going to be getting myself the Atmos Ninja 5. This really depends on what your use case is. Now, if you're the type of person that wants to record eight days long and you want to use this as a security camera, yeah, no, it's not going to work. But I can't imagine any production work where you're going to want to run your camera much longer than an hour, two hours, or even four hours, and then to accept a 10 minute cool down time. Now, I know on most sets you have do have breaks, you have unions, and so you do need to give talent a break. You need them, they need to have some sort of bathroom break or bio break. And if you are running a production, you're probably going to have, let's be honest here, you're going to have more than one R5. So if you've got two by and one overheats, just put the other one in and, you know, you've, you've got unlimited recording time. But for the ordinary filmmaker, this is terrific news. If you want to be able to record in 4K60 or 4K HQ as long as you want without overheating, then you just have to ask yourself, are you willing to spend an extra $1,000 on an Atmos Ninja R5? Sorry, I did it again. On the Atmos Ninja 5, with a 512 gigabyte SSD attached to it. I, I think this is, this changes the game. This changes the R5. It takes away the biggest crippling aspect of the R5 that everyone's been complaining about. And I, I think that the whole idea of overheating is now, has now become a non-issue. Sure, we're waiting to see a firmware update from Canon to see what Canon has to say about it, but this is where the market has come up with something, a solution that, well, yes, it adds more money. Yes, it adds more weight. And generally, I like shooting without having that weight. But for a lot of us that do need to record for many hours, well, for the studio work, such as what I'm doing here when I'm shooting outside doing my YouTube work, the Atmos Ninja R5 is, oh, wow. If, if I get the Atmos Ninja R5 and I'm shooting outside, well, I'm going to be shooting in 4K fine all the time. There's no reason not to. So that's really exciting news. I'm sorry, I know I'm sort of, I got a case of where I'm, well, verbal diarrhea. I just keep going over and over, but I'm, I'm shocked by this. I'm stunned by this. We've had how many weeks now? 
well, the better part of a month, everyone talking about overheating and everyone, yep, it's overheating. Then we get the, RC, the A7S III, we're talking about overheating there. Um, and I'd be curious to see if, if you have a Sony A7S III, if you can do the same thing, strap on an Atmos Ninja, or, or Atmos Ninja 5, uh, remove the battery, remove the cards, and see if you can blow past the recording limits outside in the Florida heat. So Dan Watson, here's a challenge to you. Can you reproduce, reproduce this test? on the A7 III, or the A7S III, I'd love to see that. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. I hope you're having a great day. I will be putting out another video later today. I'm gonna to do another low light test. The one I did last night, I'm really, really happy with the response. I wasn't too happy with the video myself. I thought I could have done better, but it was really late. And I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how well the camera performs in low light without me doing any changes. And I shot that purely in auto. Tonight, I'm going to shoot in manual. I'm going to try some different settings. I want to have the background in focus. I'm going to try moving in and out of the frame. I want to put the autofocus through some more tests. So that's coming later today. But thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.